Many projects out there start with the correct dependency rule until the day that it's broken. And today we'll take a look on how to keep that in shape as you want using a simple tool like Fluent Assertions and writing tests for it. To show you that, I will be using Jason Taylor template for clean architecture. And there, as you know, we'll be using projects like application, domain, infrastructure, and a web application project. So according to clean architecture, what we should see here is that our application should depend on domain, infrastructure, and the web UI should depend on the application and know the domain, but they should not know each other. So let's see if that is true by using fluent assertions and writing some tests. Okay, so first step, let's create a test project and install fluent assertions there. Let's go here to the test folder, add a new project and using XUnit because it's the one that I really like, architecture dot tests. That will be my project. So the architecture tests on my case, let's rename this thing to dependency tests. And for our dependency tests, we will need fluent assertions. It's basically the project that I use everywhere to express my assertions. I really like it. So now the first thing that you'll do is checking if in fact our application depends on the domain. Okay, that will be our first test. So application should depend on domain. How can we express that test using uh, fluent assertions? The first thing that I will need is having a way to access the assembly that I want to check the, the references. So I need to have something to go to the application and, and use it. So before we move on, let's just add references to this test project to all the other projects that we'll be checking. So all other projects that are part of our solution. Now, if I want to check if the application depend on domain, I need to access the assembly of that application. I have multiple options to do that. And I could, for example, go here and say, okay, could clean architecture dot application and look inside here for a given class that is already here and use that as a way to access the assembly. But I don't like to do things that way. So what I will be doing is following a technique that is an assembly marker that I will create on each project. Why I will be doing that? Because I prefer to have a specific interface for this purpose than using a class that one day may change the folder, the namespace, maybe rename, maybe remove. And on those changes, I will have ripple effects on these type of tests. And I don't want that. So I will be creating my own assembly marker for this reason. To do that, let's just start. We need to do that for all the four projects. So let's go one by one, create an interface. So I application assembly marker, that will be the name. And I leave it just as that. Let me just move this to the correct namespace. And let's do that to the other one, just interface I domain assembly marker. Okay. And I will do it for the other two projects. You don't need to see this. Okay. I just added the assembly marker for infrastructure and the web UI, you know, is exactly the same as the other two. So now we have the conditions to start writing our dependency tests. So let's do that. So our first test will be checking if the application assembly depends on the domain assembly. So first let's access to that application assembly. And we can do that by doing a type of, and now we go to our I application assembly marker, that one that we just created. And there we have our assembly. So let's do the same for the domain, domain assembly equals to type of I domain assembly marker dot assembly. Now is as simple as doing the following. We just go to the application assembly and using fluent assertions, as maybe you are used to, you do dot shoot reference domain assembly. Just that. Let's run this to see if it's true. And it's green. So perfect. Our application depends on domain. So now let's write a different type of test. Let's test one where we check that, for example, our domain doesn't depend on the infrastructure, for example. So creating a new fact, 
public void domain time should not depend on infrastructure okay and this one we will need to have this once again so let's just copy it and we need one for infrastructure because we also need the infrastructure this time so i infrastructure assembly market and in terms of how do you assert the idea is exactly the same you'll see how simple it is you just say domain assembly should not reference infrastructure perfect so let's run this one to see as well if it's true okay and we have a green as well so as you can see, this is as simple as defining our conditions like this, okay? There are other tools to do this type of um, uh, architecture tests, but the main reason why I like to use this technique is that I'm using Fluent Assertions that is exactly the same assertion library that I use for all the rest of my tests. And as you can see, it's really simple. Even if I need to do a more complex uh, thing, like for example, imagine that I, you want to check that not only you depend on the infrastructure, but you also does not depend on the web UI. So you just define here a new one and you combine that assertion on the same test. Perfectly possible. Okay, so let's now do one step further. Okay, let's test one thing more. And that thing will be if our web UI doesn't depend in fact on the infrastructure according to clean architecture idea so let's write the test for that so this time fact public void so our web should not depend on infrastructure just copy here infrastructure assembly and define one for our web assembly and this time i web api marker and this time our web assembly should not reference the infrastructure just to recap we are doing a test exactly the other ones and we don't expect our yeah, web application depend on the infrastructure because according to the clean architecture it should not so let's just run it and see what how it goes and it failed and why it failed as you can see it says it says that our web UI should not reference the infrastructure. But this is happening for one reason, that is, as you can see, our web UI in its dependencies as a dependency not only on the application, as it should, but also on the infrastructure. And why this happens? This happens because when you create a web application, for example, that will be the host for your solution, what you'll be doing often is that you'll be defining your dependency injection rules there. So that means that the project where you are configuring your dependency injection container needs to know all the other projects. That's why you have a reference here. So on this template, there was a decision of living with this fact. You have other ways to avoid this thing. And if you want to know them, just take a look into this video. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, just keep things simple.